Good morning. Today is Thursday, September 30th, 2021. On Tuesday, Shemini Atzeres, the Jewish people lost one of our great leaders, teachers, scholars, Rabbi Dr. Moshe Tendler of blessed memory. Dr. Tenler, Rabbi Tenler, was a Rosh HaYeshiva of Yeshiva University. He was a professor of biology, and he was also a professor of Jewish medical ethics. He first came to Yeshiva University as a high school student, and he stayed there for about 80 years, leading and teaching generations of students. He was also, for many, many decades, a rabbi of a synagogue in Muncie, New York. He was brilliant, sharp. Uh, he had um, a wicked sense of humor. Um, so many of my interactions with him involved listening to him deliver lectures at annual conventions of the RCA Rabbinical Council of America going back uh, 30 years or more. And he was always a featured speaker and he would always speak about some topic that was extremely important, urgent, contemporary, relevant. I'll mention one in a moment. And he would always start the same way. Again, remember, this is a group of synagogue rabbis that we get together for an annual convention to discuss issues. And he would always start his talk, which was on some complex topic. He would say, I know that you guys really came here to this convention just so you could get a short Dvar Torah to share in your shul this coming Shabbos. So here's the short sermon nugget and then we'll get this out of the way, and then I'll be able to go on to the more serious topic. I'm not saying that he was wrong, but it was a little, uh, you know, he wanted to put people in their place, which we deserved. There are so many facets to his greatness and to his contributions to the Jewish world. I want to focus just on a very few briefly with you this morning, that had the greatest and most lasting effect on me personally. One of the Torah ideas that I heard him repeat a number of times was based on the verse, the Pasuk in the Torah, Midvar Sheker Tirchak, to stay far away from falsehood. And he would quote that verse and he would always say, the Torah does not prohibit falsehood. The Torah says, Midbar Sheker Tirchak, between you and falsehood, there must be a distance, there must be a chasm. You can't even say something that walks up to the line of being close to falsehood. You have to stay far, far, far away. And he lived this just as he taught it. He refused to go along with whatever was popular, with whatever was the majority when he felt that his way was right. And he stood firm with his opinions, with his beliefs, and he continued to teach them. One of the most important impacts Rabbi Tendler had on me took place on January 27th, 1993. And that was the date of a conference for rabbis that took place in New York on the subject of domestic abuse. And Rabbi Tendler was the featured speaker at that conference. It was, to the best of my recollection, the earliest rabbinic conference on the subject of domestic abuse as it applied with, applies within the Jewish world 
including within the Orthodox world. And among the points that he made that day, points that are just as valid today as they were in 1992, 1993, approximately 20% of all families experienced sustained physical or verbal abuse. That means a pattern of abusing another, an attempt to instill within a family member a sense of worthlessness and a feeling of being trapped and an attempt to control the behavior of another adult. Domestic abuse occurs at the same rate across all religions, all socioeconomic levels, all levels of ed education, all races, all ages. I remember I came home and I spoke about this subject in my shul to disbelief. And I remember that there were people who, and, and people who were intelligent people and thoughtful people and people who were supportive and they were aghast. They were disbelieving. How is it possible to even consider that Orthodox Jews should be committing this terrible sin at the same rate as other people of other religions, no religions? But it was true and it is true. And 20% means one out of five. That means you look to your left, you look to your right. One out of five is a family suffering from domestic abuse. One of the many points that Dr. Tendler made in his lecture at that conference was our schools, talking about religious, orthodox day schools, our schools teach don't touch muksa on Shabbos. Muksa is those categories of objects that are not for use on Shabbos. We're not supposed to touch them. We're not supposed to move them on Shabbos. Our schools teach don't touch muksa on Shabbos, but they don't teach not to touch someone else's wife or husband. And they don't teach not to touch your own spouse in an inappropriate manner. Because of this address and others like it, Preventing domestic abuse and helping others who are abused became and remains a major focus of my life. I can only imagine how many thousands and thousands of people, mostly women and children, who have been helped by rabbis who were inspired by Dr. Tendler that day. Another area that has been tremendously important to me and to thousands of others, Rabbi Dr. Tendler was one of the foremost experts in Jewish medical ethics in every area of the subject. He was a profoundly expert teacher, able to convey complex subjects in straightforward, clear-cut manners. And he was the main expositor of his father-in-law, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein of Blessed Memory, the greatest halakhic authority of his generation. He was the son-in-law. 
And as such, he spoke with his father-in-law about medical ethics, along with every other subject, more frequently than anyone else in the world. And therefore, he had insights to his father-in-law's thinking and opinion more than anyone else in the world. And so Dr. Tendler's teaching of medical ethics approach to experimental treatment, to end-of-life care, to so many different subjects, all reflected his father-in-law's opinions, the opinions of Ramosha Feinstein. And the most consequential area that this happened was on the debate over brain stem death. Now, I've shared with you in the past, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again, this gigantic dispute as to what determines the moment of death within a person. Is it the moment that the heart stops? Or is it the moment that the brain stem, which controls the heart, stops to work? At issue, of course, is the possibility of major organ transplantation. If you accept that you have to wait until the heart actually stops, even if the brain stem is no longer working and the patient is on a ventilator, transplant donation of organs like lung and heart is virtually impossible. Very, very early on, Dr. Tendler made it clear that Rabbi Moshe Feinstein's opinion was that brain stem death was the proper criteria and that would facilitate organ transplantation. I remember clearly there was a great debate about this. First of all, there was a debate about what the opinion should be because there were other great authorities besides Rabbi Feinstein that disagreed and continue to disagree with that opinion. But there was also great controversy over what did Rabbi Feinstein actually say. And at that time, early on, there was one responsa that he had written that was somewhat ambiguous. And everyone jumped on it to claim that Dr. Tendler's version of his father-in-law's statement was wrong, it was incorrect, but it was clear to me immediately that no one knew Rav Moshe's opinions as well as Dr. Tendler. Of course, he is the most trusted source of what did Rabbi Feinstein hold and say. It was obvious to me, as it was to many others. And it was for that reason that I accepted in my own personal advising and acting on that to accept Rav Moshe Feinstein's opinion, allowing for organ transplantation and treating brain stem death as the correct criteria for the death of an individual. But for decades, Rabbi Tendler's version of Rabbi Moshe Feinstein's opinion was disputed, discarded, rejected. He was regularly disdained and belittled, but he never wavered. And finally, it was only years later, a couple of decades later, when Rav Moshe Feinstein's own later writings on the subject were published that made it eminently clear that what Dr. Tendler had been saying all along was in fact what Rav Moshe Feinstein held. How many thousands and thousands of lives did Dr. Tendler save and will be saved by his perseverance, and he was among the earliest persevering in arguing for the halachic permissibility 
of donating organs for transplant and therefore not just permissibility, but to, del but to label it as the highest mitzvah that a person could possibly do to be able to save multiple other lives by the donation of organs at the time of a person's passing. Finally, Dr. Tendler wrote this important statement completely different subject, but in its own way, it sums up his remarkable life. It's a paragraph about Shabbos. And what does it mean to rest on Shabbos? On Shabbos, we rest. What does that mean to rest? Dr. Tenler wrote as follows. For six days, we share with the beasts of the field the common goal material sustenance. Only on the Shabbos, when we proclaim God, the creator and man as one created in his image, do we truly assume human proportion. To rest by lying on a hammock, ruminating on a large meal would be a further mimicry of the animal world. To rest by spending the day in intellectual disquietude, by mind-racking study of God and man, by fatiguing examination of the development of our children, is a uniquely Jewish concept. This Shabbos, we read the Parsha Bereshis, we read about God's resting on Shabbos and our command to rest on Shabbos. And we should learn from Dr. Tendler what it means to rest on Shabbos is to engage in the, the intellectual and spiritual pastimes that we may not give the correct attention to during the week. The time for that is Shabbos. Dr. Tendler has contributed to this world in ways that are enormous. Many of them are known, many of them are not known. But he will remain as a great teacher and leader for many, many generations. May his memory be a blessing to his family and to the thousands and thousands of people who owe their lives to Dr. Tendler and his teaching. My friends, I want to thank you very much for joining today. I wish you a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.